Bingo. Silurians are a brilliant race. Homo reptilia, great brains. They've evolved at such a quick and brilliant rate. They're very human, but, you know, they're lizard. <laughs> They were on Earth before us, actually. They're not all bad guys, they're not all good guys. They're complicated, strong, intelligent. They're exactly like people. In fact, in many ways, they mirror us. Silurians uh, are back. We're not monsters, and neither are they. The Silurians look great. I mean, the prosthetics was... It's, they did really great stuff on them, and they're different to the Silurians of, of yonder. The original television series in which uh, the Silurians appeared, uh, there was a seven-parter in John Pertwee's first year. <laughs> Hello. Are you a Silurian? The Silurians uh, returned a couple of years later in The Sea Devils, uh, another terrific story, actually. My, my simplest story, where they were just warriors from the, uh, the sea, and they came back again in a Peter Davidson story called Warriors of the Deep. Originally in the, the classic John Pertwee series, I think absolutely they, they worked terrifically for that period and that time. And much, much better than that television serial was the same writer adapting his, that, that serial into a book called Doctor Who and the Cave Monsters. That book is great. That's a great children's book. That's a, that's a belter and it really stands up. And it was so much better because it made the Silurians into people. Instead of sort of uh, uh, wobbly rubber monsters going boop, 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 uh, they were suddenly people with, very, with names, very clear identities. Stephen's brief with the Silurians was we have to reinvent them for a modern audience, you know. It's, uh, I think um, we didn't want them necessarily to be uh, unwieldy rubber suits, um, which, you know, you could be in danger of doing. We went a very different route with the appearance. We had permission, in a way, from the series because the, the, the twice the, those monsters turned up in the classic series, they were very, very different. The Sea Devils and the Silurians were very, very different appearance. So I posited that we had a third strand so that we could get proper prosthetics on really good actors uh, and so they could actually have emotional scenes and proper dialogue. We wanted the Silurians to be human in a way. Ob obviously they're not human, but we didn't want them to be particularly monster-like and therefore it was, it was, it was right that their, their characteristics were very recognisable to us. There wasn't anything overtly monster-like. With that, I think uh, they each brought with them different quirks, Silurian quirks, which was great because it gave each one of them character. We weren't saying, right, every Silurian's the same, they each brought their own thing. My approach was sort of informed by what the director said, in the, in the, in the way that uh, my character, being a diplomat, is a sort of peacemaker, like a sort of Nelson Mandela figure. Richard Hope as well as Malika, he, you know, I think that that idea of sniffing he, he, he brought up as well, which I thought was great, you know, the idea that uh, Silurians perhaps have a great sense of smell or, or that they, that's how they communicate and, and it was kind of animal-like in a way, but it, was, it, it wasn't so animal-like that we didn't actually relate to it. And talking it through with the director, um, they're on, they're basically, they're humanoid. So they've got human qualities. They, they stand on two feet. You know, they, they can hear, see, or taste. While you slept, they've evolved. I've seen it for myself. We used to hunt apes for sport. When we came underground, they bred and polluted this planet. Shush now, Restag. Go and play soldiers. I'll let you know if I need you. 
it gave them greater freedom, it gives them greater expression, uh, and I think there's a chance of making each individual Silurian a bit more um, idiosyncratic and having their own traits. Whenever I've had the opportunity, I've tried to introduce a little element of um, humour or a smile, so um, just working with the face and you're thinking, what can you do with prosthetics? Um, can you smile? And eventually you can find yourself going from quite a, a confrontation as a lizard. And then choosing to break it. A little smile. <laughs> and that's, what, I mean, that's the element I'd quite like to undercut. The worst thing is that you can't hear yourself as well. Because your ears are all covered. So it's, um, so it's like you can constantly muffle, so you can't quite hear your own voice. And you don't have them... Um, the prosthetic comes right up to your lips as well. It's quite an odd feeling to, to talk as well. It's quite, you've got to be a bit more warmed up in your, in your uh, lips and voice and just, just got to commit to everything and go for it. <laughs> it's great fun. I don't really look like this. Well, maybe I do. I can't remember what I look like now. <laughs> if you're going to dress up as a lizard alien Silurian, you've got to roll with the punches. That's how it goes. <laughs> What I was very keen on is I really wanted the Silurians to be beautiful. They look incredible. There's a line with uh, a layer who's a warrior that's come up. And he says, oh, you are beautiful, you know. Because he's seen them before with an eye in the middle of their head. Uh, and he says they're sort of different to last time, but I think he admires their form and their, you know, structure. You are beautiful. The script called, called them to be more uh, sleek and, uh, dare I say, it's sexy. Uh, so they did actually want to have more of the actors' expressions uh, being able to come through the appliances. So uh, we then went back with the idea of uh, having more of the layers of design kind of built up on the back of the head and to then work forwards and keep uh, the appliances on the face quite thin. And you think with prosthetics you can't do very much, but actually they're so good, these. I mean, look, you can, you can do it and um, even pick your nose. Uh, Silurian bogies. It's, it's, it's incredibly believable. You think, oh, they're going to have green scales all over them. How believable can that be? But actually, I, I, it does look believable and you really start to buy into it. They are just utterly captivating, they look brilliant on screen and you can't not look at them. And of course you don't know, you've never seen the actor unless you, you know, it's a famous actor or whatever, but often you don't know the actor that's under there. So you don't know them as a human being apart from their picture. You only know them as a green lizard. And then after the job's finished, they take off and they're like, oh, goodbye or whatever. Like, oh, so you were a layer or you were Restack or whoever and it is, uh, yeah, they're a brilliant prosthetic. Well done to the prosthetic team. What was very important in the story is the parallels between the Silurian race and humanity, that actually these are not others, they are just absolutely uh, a, a separate race who occupy the same space. And so the, the kind of mirror that, that the Silurians kind of offer up to humanity was very important. The, the themes in, in episode nine are, 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 it's a big story really, you know, it's a big theme. And I think the great thing about the Silurians is they're not just a monster, they're a, a species with a purpose and with a, and with a need. And I think it, they're, they're one of the really great uh, Doctor Who races. <laughs>